Okay, babe. You cozy? <laughs> good, good, good. Now remember, if any bugs are on me in the morning, I will cry and you will have to save me. <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> good. I'm glad we're in agreement. Mm-hmm. I'm very glad. You got enough blanket though. I don't want to steal them all from you, especially when we're like outside. I mean, we're in a tent, but it's still outside, kind of. Mm-hmm. Yes, I know it's summer, but even in the middle of the night and during the summer, it can get kind of cold sometimes, so. I want to make sure my baby stays warm, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. There you go. Look at you, you look so cute and cozy, honey. Mm-hmm. What? Hmm. No, you just looked like you wanted to say something. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> no, baby. No bears are gonna get us. No raccoons are gonna get us. <laughs> no wild animals will get us, honey. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. There are campsites all around us Inhabited by people So we're not the only ones here <laughs> mm -hmm. The only thing that's running around Might be squirrels And maybe some skunk But I mean the tent is closed off We'll be safe I promise you Mm -hmm. I've done this enough times to know that. There are no bears around here either. Okay, I made sure before we booked it. <laughs> that would be, would be safe from anything like that. Mm -hmm. I promise you, honey. And if, if for some weird and extremely odd situation... That there is a bear. I will protect you with my whole life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's that meme that's like? It's like a meme. It's like, um... <laughs> what is it? Yeah, that one. Is, it's like, if you ever see me fighting in the forest with a grizzly bear, help the bear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll be... You'll have to help the bear, honey, after I'm finished with him. Okay. <laughs> No worries. No worrying. Okay, honey. Mm -mm. Not at all. Mm. Hmm? What are we gonna do in the morning? Whatever you wanna do. I brought stuff to make pancakes. I used to always make pancakes when we were younger. That would be like our camping breakfast so i brought all of this stuff the stuff to make it and everything um there's also a really cute breakfast place down the street like a little cute diner that we can go to um not tomorrow but like another day i saw it on the way here i think that was the, by the point you were asleep it's literally like right down the street <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah but, um, we could go there, my treat. <laughs> and then, I don't know, whatever you want to do. We can explore the campground. We have our bikes. Um, I think there's, um, a lake or something we can go down to. 
I would say we could swim in it, but a lake is kind of icky. Kind of icky for me. <laughs> I don't want to swim in a lake. The fish, the the fish are scary. Okay, <laughs> mm -mm. you'll have to carry me if we go. <laughs> but it's kind of icky. I don't know. More like a pond. I feel like, <laughs> and ponds are gross. But I don't know. We can figure something out. I think they probably have activities going on during during the day as well. Campgrounds usually have that. Um, or we can venture off. I mean, this is a town we've never been to before, so we can venture off into the town. Find something to do. Just have fun. <laughs> as long as I'm spending my time with you, I will be very happy. Mm -hmm. Quality time with you is my favorite. Like, even when we're, like, at home, right, and I'm on one side of the room and you're, like, over doing something else, and we're not, we don't even have to be talking. I just enjoy your presence and just knowing you're there. That's all I need. <laughs> Hearing, like, signs of life. <laughs> Sounds kind of weird, but hearing signs of life. Especially your sign of life. <laughs> it just, uh, I don't know. It makes me happy. You make me happy, honey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -mm. I love you too. So much. Okay. I am the happiest. I could be right now mm -hmm. doing one of my favorite things with my favorite person ever. <sighs> kind of makes me emotional, but I will get emotional, I promise. <laughs> I just smile at you, honey. <laughs> you just make me really happy. Mm. <laughs> I'm just really happy. <laughs> mm -mm, baby. <laughs> mm. It's so cute. Thank you. <laughs> story because <laughs> I promised you one. Oh god I don't even like let's try to make up a story quickly in my head this is no prior thought to it okay so you'll have to bear with me because I'm literally gonna make it up as I go okay let's make it about a grizzly bear why not <laughs> You get comfy now. Okay, you get comfy, baby. <laughs> mm -hmm. You get comfy, go. Snuggle, snuggle, snuggle. <laughs> snuggle, snuggle, snuggles. Snuggle, snuggle, snuggles. <laughs> okay, baby. Let me, let me, let me hold you, okay? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna wrap my arms around you. So comfy. Such a such, such a little happy baby you are. <laughs> uh okay, baby, okay. There you go, baby, okay. Close your eyes, okay? I'm gonna tell you a little bedtime story. <laughs> my little baby. Baby. 
a little baby deserves a bedtime story. Uh huh. Mm hmm. I love kissing the top of your head. Okay. Um. <laughs> shush, 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 shush. You shush. You're supposed to be closing your eyes. <laughs> Trying to fall asleep. Okay. Okay, baby. Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, <laughs> there was a grizzly bear named. I don't know. Um. Clarence. Clarence. <laughs> and he had a favorite item of clothing, which was a little bow tie, and he wore it around his neck all the time. And it was a little blue bow tie. So Clarence was walking, walking one day, and he came across a forest he's never seen before. And he decided to make his way inside. Soon it became dark and sort of dreary around him, but he held his head high and tried not to get scared. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> tried not to get scared, but he was a little worried because he felt as though he might be lost. Soon, minutes of exploring turned into hours, winding down trails and paths that didn't look familiar to him anymore. Now he started to become more worried. He was scared that he wouldn't be able to find his way home, and he was hoping, and he was scared that he would never see his loved ones again. He came across a fork in the road, and he had to choose which way to go. Baby, which way do you think Clarence should take? Okay, yeah, me too. So he went down that path, and he stumbled across a tortoise. At first, he almost didn't see him, because Clarence is huge. And the tortoise was very small. Clarence almost stepped on him <laughs> because of his size. And <clears throat> but before he put his foot down onto the tortoise tortoise's shell, he heard a small scream of protest from underneath him which caused him to trip on the air and fall backwards onto his bum. <laughs> then he was face to face with the tortoise he almost killed. <laughs> the tortoise said, Hey, watch where you're going! And Clarence said, I'm very sorry, sir. I did not see you there. Please forgive me. I'm very lost and I've been trying to find my way home. The tortoise just scoffed at him and mumbled something under his breath and tried to slowly escape the situation. Well, Clarence wasn't having any of it. He didn't really understand that this tortoise was trying to get away from the conversation. He just sort of thought he was leading him somewhere. So Clarence fumbled up, back onto his feet. The tortoise said, My name is Horace, but look, I'm not here to help you because you almost killed me. <laughs> And Clarence hurriedly responded with, But again, sir, I'm lost, and I really need help trying to find my way out of this forest. You seem to live here. By any chance, do you know your way out? And Horace said, Again, I'm not here to help you. 
and Clarence said, please. And, and Horace said, okay, look, if you keep walking down the path, you're going to make it to, to, um, fuck, what's the name? You're going to make it to a small house. Knock on the door and ask for... And ask for Meadow. If you need to, you can say that Horace sent you. And so Clarence thanked him and went on his merry way down the path. But as he continued to make his way down through the forest, the path began to shrink, and the trees around him appeared more spindly than before, and the atmosphere grew more weary and dark with each passing second, and the fear in the pit of his stomach grew stronger. He was worried the tortoise had led him on a journey to his own death. But soon a tiny house began to appear began to began to appear in the distance and he let out a sigh of relief. He made his way up to the front doorstep and knocked three times on the wooden door. Instantly, it opened just a crack, and he heard a voice from inside ask, Who is it? It's Clarence, he responded. Who's Clarence? The mysterious voice said. Clarence, I'm a grizzly bear. Horace, the tortoise, sent me here. He said you'd be able to help me get out of the forest. There was silence on the other side. Which confused Clarence. But after, but after a pause, the door opened all the way. You can come in. He was hesitant, but his legs soon, his, his feet soon unstuck themselves from the ground below and carried him inside. He quickly remembered the task he was given. Are you Meadow? Clarence asked. Yes, Meadow responded. <laughs> so sweet. <laughs> so sweet. Okay. Yes, Meadow responded. <laughs> and it was still quite dark in the house, and Clarence couldn't make out his surroundings yet, so he wasn't sure who he was talking to, except that their name was. He wasn't sure why, but he felt a sense of safety wash over him as they made their way to the next room over. There, there was more light, and he soon began to see that Meadow was a grizzly bear just like him. She was very pretty, he thought with a similar bow as the one around his neck, around her own ear. It was yellow, which made Clarence smile. I like your bow, he said, and she smiled back. Likewise, she answered. She gestured for him to sit down, and 
Thus began his telling of his story and how he got lost. She listened carefully, trying to map out each direction he said he went. Once he finished his story, she concluded that she might be able to help him. She said, while I'm not exactly sure where you came from, I am willing to help you get out of this forest. Which brought a smile to Clarence's face. Thank you, he said, and stood up to his feet. Meadow followed. But instead of walking to the front door, she walked to her kitchen. Clarence hurried quickly behind. What are you doing? He asked curiously. Setting up a bag for us. Clarence was confused. It didn't take him too long to get to where he was, so why would they need a bag? She replied with just in case they got lost. So he stayed quiet and watched as she packed things, packed essentials like food, water, anything she thought they might need on their journey back to the edge of the forest. It only took her about 15 minutes until she was all ready and had a, back, a bag strapped on her back. And they made their way out the front door. Hmm. <laughs> Man, I know I'm gonna continue. I just, <laughs> you just look so cute. Okay. Okay. As they walked out the front door, they noticed that Horace finally caught up and was already walking by the house. Meadow, she called out for him, reprimanding him for not helping out Clarence as much as he may need it, because she knew he knew the way out. The tortoise was very smart. So she picked him up and swooped him in her arms as he fought to get down. They were good friends. Clarence could tell that much by their dynamic. He screamed and wiggled to be let down, but she firmly said no and started walking in, a dire in the direction Clarence in the direction Clarence recognized he came from. You're going to help us get out, Meadow demanded. And the tortoise complied. But not without mumbling under his breath that Clarence tried to kill him. <laughs> Meadow shushed him off, saying it was most likely a misunderstanding, and they made their way down the path. And, um, maybe I think I accidentally made this. <laughs> you might have accidentally went too in depth on this story. <laughs> I feel like it's just starting. <laughs> they haven't gone on their journey yet or anything. Okay, anyways. Uh, I don't know. Um, so they began to make their way down the path and trying to retrace Clarence's steps with the help with the help of Clarence of course but he didn't have the best memory so the three of them tried to 
piece the puzzles back piece the puzzle pieces back together <laughs> um And when they made it to the fork in the road, Clarence declared that he remembered the spot, specifically because he stood there for a while making the choice. But this time, there were three snakes in the way of them continuing. The snakes immediately started wrapping their themselves around the legs of the grizzly bears and the third snake tried to make his way up meadow to reach Horace Clarence stayed calm but meadow but meadow and Horace seemed horrified flailing about to try and get them off. The reason why Clarence wasn't scared is because he had a friend who was a snake back home, so he knew how to deal with them in the way their minds worked. Excuse me, Clarence said. He hoped that these snakes would know his friend. Do you by any chance know anybody by the name? Um, by the name, <laughs> by the name Michael. The snake stopped for a moment. Yes, <laughs> they reply. Who's asking? <laughs> the one on Clarence report. <laughs> she says you're supposed to be sleeping. Mm -hmm, you're supposed to be sleeping. Clarence, he replied calmly. I'm Michael's friend. Best friend, he corrected himself. I was with him earlier today, the snake said. How do we know you're not lying? Clarence paused for a moment to think of an answer. Sure, he knew Michael, but he didn't know how he could prove it. Ask me any question about him, and I will be able to answer it. So the snake thought, and thought, and thought, until finally he came up with an answer. He asked... <laughs> Sorry. He asked, who is Michael's favorite author? And Clarence instantly smiled and said, William Snakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help it. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 so, so, so. <laughs> And the snake laughed and said, yes. <laughs> so they loosened their hold on the bears and Horace <laughs> and slithered off. But not before giving them a hint in the right direction. Continues on this path. Then take a right. Maybe you'll be able to find an otter there who 
will be able to give you the next direction. Good luck. And they slithered off. So they followed the directions. And soon they did meet that said otter. It was not one, but two otters that seemed like twins. Oliver and Olivia. <laughs> I'm sorry, my names are not very creative. <laughs> I feel like they all start with the letters, don't they? Maybe I only did that for the otter. Actually, never mind. I only did that for the otters. <laughs> they seem like otter names. I can't even shut up. <laughs> um, and, um, so Oliver and Olivia were playing. with sticks as they approached them. They seemed like two balls of energy, so to speak. Two people that would be good to have on their journey as they could run and scurry ahead and come back and let them know what they found. Hello, Meadow said, approaching them. You must be the two otters the snakes were talking you must be the otters the snakes were talking about. The otters stopped playing and turned around to face Meadow and the others. The snakes? They questioned. Yeah, we saw them not too long ago when they said that we might find you here. The otters looked at each other inquisitively and turned around again. Oh, they replied and continued to play with their sticks. <laughs> Oliver asked them if they wanted to join their game, and they said, No, we're trying to get out of the forest. We're lost. Immediately, the two otters stopped. You're lost, they said in sync. Yes. Well, we know the way out, they said. Come on, follow us. And they scurried ahead, so far that Clarence could barely make out their small little bodies running, running along the path. Hey, slow down, he called out. But it was too late. They were already so far ahead that it seemed as though it was a lost cause. Until the two of them came running back. Sorry, they apologized. We forgot that we're faster than most. They said sheepishly. We will try and walk at your pace. May I ask how you got lost? Olivia asked. Clarence replied by saying that he was curious because the forest looked inviting, so he decided to venture off for the day. But he didn't expect to get lost for so long. Or get or get lost at all. For that fact. <laughs> She silently nodded back in at his response, and they continued to walk. She said, It's not much longer until we're actually out, and at the edge of the forest. Clarence smiled and longed for his warm bed, and his house, and his friends back at home. And and he and he thanks the otters for helping them and thanked Meadow and Horace for coming along. Soon they did make it to the end of the forest. And Horace feared that his journey ended there because he was small and slow and he didn't want to get lost out in the big world. So Meadow let him off, and he scurried away. Lived and scurried, he was more like... Trudged away. 
I don't know. He, he just he just left, okay? But saying his goodbye, he says apologies for not wanting to help because they made a friendship along the way and said, if you ever come in the forest again, you know where to find me. And Clarence laughed because he probably wouldn't know where to find him because he got lost on his way. Uh, <laughs> so he wouldn't be able to find him again. But this is all that counts. <laughs> and, um... The two otters said their goodbyes, and Clarence thanked them again for their help, and Meadow decided that she would go home to see Clarence, to walk Clarence home just to make sure he got home safe. So they walked and chatted, and Clarence invited Meadow over for dinner, and said she, that he would invite Michael over as well. So they went, and he finally made it home. And he walked through the house, and he called up Michael, and they sat at the table while Clarence made dinner for them. He was dreaming the whole time of a hot bowl of soup and some bread, so that's what he made. And he made them for them both. They all became friends, and they ate their soup and bread together. And they giggled and laughed, and, um, and they became all best friends, and since Meadow has a good memory, she remembered how to get back there, so she visited him every weekend, and they all had, they had dinner every weekend together, and every week somebody made something special each week, and they brought them all together, and they all lived happily ever after. The end. Sorry, the ending is kind of rushed there. I got, I'm, I'm tired. I'm making myself tired. And, uh, I know. Oh, <laughs> oh babies. <laughs> no sleep. Good night, baby. Have sweet dreams. <laughs> so cute. Oh. <laughs>